Hi, everyone. I'm immigration lawyer John Cus Robbie. It's March 7, 2023. Thank you for joining us again. We're here every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time to take your questions live about U.S. education, provide uh, U.S. immigration, and doing educational stuff about what the process is because it's very complex and very frustrating. And every time you do it, something different going on. So I want to help you with that so you have an understanding of what's going on. So we come in live and take your questions, do our best to, to answer them, you know, to, 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 to help you out uh, and uh, help your life get a little bit easier. So I'm immigration lawyer John Kesrabi. I'm the managing attorney of the JQK Immigration Law Firm, taking clients from all across the world, primarily helping people who are getting married, who have extraordinary ability, people who are investing and starting businesses in the United States. Uh, and uh, there's a couple more types of things in there, citizenship, green card renewal, and the like. We love doing what we do because we're among as immigrants or associated directly with immigrants at our firm. And it's just the greatest thing you can do in the world is help people in the freedom of movement to capture and have a better life in the world. And it's really the best job out there. So I'm really blessed to be in the position that I am. I try to do my best to help other people in any way I can. So you'll find uh, hundreds and not at this point, thousands of clips online uh, detailing every step of the way for the types of cases we handle. Just look at our YouTube pages, our Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the like. And we have a lot of blogs and ebooks. We have this really good guide called the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide. If you go to marriageimmigrationlaw.com, that's marriageimmigrationlaw.com, you're going to find the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide downloaded, 40 plus pages of free content uh, about the marriage and fiance visa price and process. It's going to help you out a lot with videos and guides, all this kind of stuff. It's going to be really helpful. And then schedule a consultation if you like it. And I add to that, we also give away free video consultations for those watching the live show. All you got to do is like, subscribe, and write consultation or ask a really good question. And we'll randomly pick people every 10 minutes. We've got three free video consultations so we can talk privately in the UK. So we can't talk too privately here because it's an open place. So I can't get all the information. Well, we have a private chat. It's going to help out. So that's something I love doing. I love meeting you uh, and, and talking with you to see who's behind the, you know, the usernames that are here. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Having said that, we're going to start the show. So how the questions come now, you know, the immigration system, as we're seeing it right now, is, is just all over the place. We have cases, marriage green card cases we file, then take eight months, a year and a half to be approved. And then we have recent ones we're filing that are getting approved in one or two months after filing. It's, that's crazy. Well, it's more like two months after filing. But well, recently, a quarter of our cases are getting their work permits a month after filing. So we have marriage cases we file. Uh, a month later, someone get the work permit, about a quarter of them, one, one out of four, get the work permit within four weeks. So it's crazy. And then other ones take seven or eight months to get the work permit. So that part's frustrating, and it just goes to the unknown aspect of the immigration system uh, of, of how unreliable it is. We have a viewer, Lindy, saying, hi, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday to you, too. We got a question on Instagram. Renata asks, good evening. I have a good news. My husband finally has the interview date. So, you know, I just went to a couple of interviews in person uh, in Los Angeles and Chatsworth office and downtown LA office with clients doing interviews. The most important thing, one, is to have the documents really prepared, know what's on the documents and bring originals, for example, and updated joint documents for a marriage green card interview if you're in the United States. I'm guessing your case is in the United States. And be prepared to answer questions about your relationship and your life together. If your spouse is going through the embassy system, consular processing, that again, they don't need to have all the documents in order, the medical and all the stuff like that, and be prepared to talk about themselves and make sure they don't have any issues. So, um, you know, good tips is be prepared. Now, preparation, the way I see it, is going to be different maybe than other people see it. So it's hard to get all that information without knowing your details and we really have a prep session with you. And it's something we do. People do contact us to have a schedule, a consultation session where you just prepare them for an interview. You know, half an hour, an hour of time um, to just act like we're the officer, talk with them, review the documents they're bringing to spot issues. And we always find one or two issues that won't necessarily, you know, deny the case. But if they don't fix it, it's going to cause delays in, in approval time. So you really want to prepare for that. But I hope you get good news, Renata. I'm glad to hear you finally got the interview day because the interviews are taking forever in a lot of cases. And so it gets very frustrating. So let's get some new questions on um, YouTube and stuff. Uh, else, uh, Cleo asks, is it true there's a 48-month extension for removal of conditions. Yeah, fortunately, that's the case. So when you get your green card based on marriage, if the marriage, um, they'll give you a temporary green card called a conditional green card. They do the same for EB-5 investor cases, but we're not going to go there. Um, now, the process to make that two-year green card to 10-year green card is called removal of conditions from I-751. This process is so backed up and the USCIS Immigration Department expects it to be delayed so much that they're issuing four-year extension notices. So your two-year green card is expiring. You have 90 days before expiration within a 90-day window to file for removal of conditions. 
when you get a receipt, the receipt notice comes on this thicker paper that along with the receipt, along with the expired green card, acts as an extension of the green card for four years now. So they're expecting this case to take, um, you know, over four years. Extensions for USCI ahead of time with this piece of paper. So that's good news in one sense because it constantly uh, go to USCIS and ask for like a, an extension of the green card. Uh, but on the other end, if their expectation is that this takes four years, that's like crazy you have to wait that long. Now, if you've been married and living with a U.S. citizen, in most cases, not all, we recommend people um, just uh, you know file for citizenship when the time comes, and that'll push things forward. But uh, you know, some people sue when it gets too long, when it goes to the uh, longer and longer. They can file a lawsuit for the delays. It's crazy that this is a situation, but yeah, that is the case. They're extending, uh, giving automatic four-year, 48-month extensions to those filing for removal conditions for I-751 to hold them over while the adjudication is pending. Well, thank you for your comment, your question. Uh, hopefully, the situation gets better with regard to these massive delays. Al Simone asks, I lost my DACA work permit and sent all the paperwork to USCIS and I received a notification saying, your case has been received and it's actively review. Um, so I just mean it's pending. Uh, how do you get work authorization in the meantime for a lost one? I haven't had this particular situation. Maybe you could contact USCIS and get an info pass appointment to get some sort of work authorization stamp in your passport. I haven't dealt with this particular scenario before, so I'm not sure if that even exists. Um, but you know, it's a mess. If you lose your work permit, you have to pay money to get a new one. It takes a long time. Try sending an expedite request. So now that you have a receipt notice, call them. If you have a need for it, like you need to get a job and they need to see that, let them know potentially they'll expedite the issuance of a new work permit that's sent to you. So that's the price solution to that is make an expedite request by calling USCIS and having a need and maybe have documentation in case they want proof, we can fax it to them later saying, hey, here's proof I have a job or a job offer. I need to get it. I need this work permit. Please hook it up. And they may speed it up. I'm going to take a quick question on Instagram. They can ask, my husband's green card expiration date is in 10 years. How do you know if we should apply for removal conditions or not? So to know if you're – so what happens is, again, I, I talked about earlier, but removal conditions is if your marriage is less than two years old when the green card is issued. Typically, USCIS just issues a two-year green card. You know that's the case. But USCIS does make mistakes. Sometimes they're supposed to give a two-year green card and they have a 10-year green card. And sometimes they're supposed to give a 10-year green card and they have a two-year green card. It's on you to know and to properly file. So what you need to do is get your marriage date and then see the date that it became a card holder. If they did adjustment of status, it's a way to the green card issuance date. If you get it through the embassy, it's the day you enter the United States. If the green card issuance date uh, is within two years of when your marriage happened, you're supposed to get a two-year green card. If the green card issuance date is after two years of marriage, then you get a 10-year green card. Now, an important note, I had a viewer who watched this and scheduled a consultation last week, and in their situation, um, they had the green card issued. It was supposed to be a two-year green card, but the USCI has issued completely incorrect dates on their green card. On the, on the issuance date, they just made up a date that made no sense. So it caused confusion and havoc in their case. So you want to make sure the, the approval date is the correct date. Again, if you're coming from consular, if you got a consular immigrant visa, um, then it's the date you enter at the airport. If you did it in the United States, then it's the date that the green card is approved. You got the notice. Typically, it's your interview date uh, if you had an interview or when you got the green card approval notice is that date. Now, Nikki, my wonderful assistant, Katrina, named you as our winner for our raffle. So if you want to have a private video consultation, Nikki, the top right corner as you. Email to me at info at jqklaw.com. We can schedule a private consultation to, to do a private review of this. I can answer your private. I want to see your green card, your marriage certificate, all that kind of stuff. But thank you for your message. For those just tuning in, we give away free video consultations. All you got to do is like and subscribe and either write consultation once uh, or write a good comment and write consultation. Or just write a good question or comment. And uh, we'll randomly choose people and uh, we'll get a private consultation. And then we've got two more to give away. So be prepared for that. Also, if you're interested in, in a marriage green card, a fiance visa, download the ultimate marriage green card guide at marriageimmigrationlaw.com. That's marriageimmigrationlaw.com. 40 plus pages of great info breaking down the process from A to Z. It's very helpful. You want to look at it before you talk with an immigration attorney um, because, uh, you know, uh, you, ha you have better questions to ask. You don't want to go in to the immigration attorney and learn talk about basic stuff. You want to get the basic stuff out of the way so you can talk next level kind of stuff. So you can really tell if the attorney's good at what they're doing and get the questions you want to answer based on your situation. 
it's gonna be very helpful. A lot of people contact me saying they want to do a bunch of work and get a lot of success because of reading the guide. It's, it's a wonderful thing out there. But thank you a lot. Let's get the next question. Rocker World asks if a green card is approved and my wife is from another country, do I mail to her the green card or she gets it? Um, if the green card is approved, either she's in the United States and gets mailed to you or she's out of the U.S. and her green card is not approved, her immigrant visa is approved. She needs to fly in. Upon entry to the United States, she becomes an immigrant visa holder. And as long as you pay the fee, the immigrant visa fee, the green card gets mailed to you at the U.S. address. So uh, I'm not sure which way your case is going, but that's how it happens. It's uh, going to be a mail to the U.S. address. Also, what is me at? I don't know. Uh, Sammy asks, hi, Mr. John. If, you pull, if you're pulled over by police, then check your driver's license by his car. But they also issue a ticket of warning. Should I mention the F-400? So the F-400 sitting in the ship asks about being detained or getting, um, you know, or, or arrested and stuff like that. If you just pull over and they talk to you, that's just an interaction with the police officer. I don't know exactly what happened there. But if you're just interacting and you could have left and stuff, I was just, you know, talking to the officer. That's typically not something that we put on the uh, issue forms. Community asks, does it make sense to upload additional photos to the USCIS portal after submitting the I-130 application? You know, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, if you didn't submit enough, yeah. But in our firm, we don't submit a case until we got overwhelming amount of evidence. So there's no need to upload more stuff. I haven't seen your case. I don't know how strong your case is. Typically, I don't like adding stuff after the fact because it may confuse the officer. With the new online system, they do give you the opportunity to upload more documents. Uh, but I don't want to just go back and forth and create more work for them. So, um, you know, if you had a good case, then no. But if you had a weak case, then yeah. I don't know the details of your case, but hopefully it was good. Muburi asks, what can I do if I'm on an F1 student visa? I'm on a work outside of school. Uh, well, you need to get OPT or CPT. Um, or if there's a, a, a financial need of some sort, you can make a special request for that. But you got to find a, 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 a legal way to do it. So you just got to research the rules and, and get it all together. Finding my house says, am I able to obtain a travel with advanced pro if I was deported before? Uh, advanced pro, they can issue if they want to, but if you had a, if you had a deportation order, you deported before, I would be hesitant in, in leaving and coming back. You never know what's going to happen, so I wouldn't recommend doing something like that. Uh, but I would need to know the details of your case, but generally it's something you want to avoid. Nebby asks, is there any way to expedite when you have four kids, U.S. citizen and wife? Four kids, U.S. citizen and wife. Expedite what? Um, you know, your I-130, your interview, your, your F-400. Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. Uh, you can try explaining anything if you have a good reason. But just having U.S. citizen family members doesn't matter. You need a, a reason to expedite. And then it depends on what you're trying to expedite, uh, whether it's something that's really worth doing. Danny asks, can we renew our passport after getting green card by asylum? So the asylum rules say you're not supposed to take advantage of the benefits of the home country that you commit asylum from. So uh, technically you shouldn't travel there, you shouldn't use the passport or apply for a new one. In practice, I haven't seen them be strict about this, but the rules say no, but whether they're gonna have to, you, that's on them. As a lawyer, I just have to fall on top of the rules say, which is don't participate with the home country. By getting a passport, you're kind of like working with them, so they don't want you to do that. So um, the, the answer I would give is I would avoid that. Uh, travel, that's the best thing to do, the appropriate thing to do in this kind of situation. We got a couple of questions on Instagram. I might ask, the last one waiver apply to employment green cards? Our firm does handle 601 waivers. Um, apply to anything, but I need to know more about your case to see uh, if it's appropriate or not and whether you have a qualified relationship, all that kind of stuff. So just, uh, just email us and schedule a private consultation about that. Thank you for your question. Sam asks, can I go back to my country for three months? I have a green card since past five months by diversity visa. Yeah, you can visit your country for a couple months. That's fine. Just don't stay there for six months or five, six months. And don't cut, habitually be outside because it's going to delay your citizenship process. We'll take some more questions on the other apps. Sam Bria asks, can I go back to my country within six months green card? Okay, I just answered that. You answered on multiple platforms, it seems, but we took care of that question. Proud Mommy asks, can I join the military if I came across the border? Um, the rules on uh, people in MAVNI, a program M A V N I, are changing. I'm not up to date on what's going on with it. Uh, but typically, you have to be a green card holder recently, or at least a citizen, to apply for military service. They had programs for people that are undocumented. 
I'm not sure what the status of this program is right now because there's lawsuits about it. I think they're reopening it, but it was shut down for a long time. Uh, but uh, I, I don't have up-to-date information. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing today or if the lawsuits are still pending on it to make a final decision on it. Canadian girl asks, what happens when the I-130 is approved and sent to state? So your I-130 is approved that your relationship is real. And then once it's approved, they send it to the state department. And it depends on what kind of I-130 it is. So I-130 is for applying for a family member. So if you're applying for like a spouse, for example, then you start working with the National Visa Center to upload documents and eventually get an appointment. But if you're applying for a citizen, applying for a sibling, that can take, case can take 14 years or 15 years or something like that. So it'll stay with the State Department until the time comes where your case is current, is what they call it, ready. Uh, and at that time, you upload the documents to the National Visa Center um, to be able to schedule an interview. Depends on what kind of 130 you have, but essentially, you got to start doing the next step of work called consular processing with the National VDC to finalize an appointment, get an interview, have success at the interview, hopefully, do a medical checkup, and uh, you'll get the immigrant visa. Sandra asks, how long are the pardons taking? We've been waiting since December. Pardon, I'm assuming you mean a waiver, a 601 waiver, a 61A waiver, a 61 waiver. Unfortunately, they're just not deciding those. So we're seeing cases take two or three years and are still pending that are not decided. When it takes that long, if you have the, 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 the situation, you can do it. A lot of times people are just filing lawsuits and suing the government for the delay, but uh, there's no end in sight into how long 601 and 6018 waivers are taking right now. Laura says, is it likely that U.S. guys will waive an interview for a military hus couple, husband is stationed in Germany? So no, it's generally it's not likely they do interviews for military couples, even if the spouse is stationed overseas. However, in general, unrelated to you being in the military, since December, almost all my cases are having the interviews waived as a Biden administration policy with the immigration law with USCIS. So there's a good chance it'll be waived if you have good evidence and you did your case clean and they don't have questions. But it's not necessarily because you're in the military, your spouse in the military. It really is because, um, you know, uh, they're just doing that. Now, a wonderful assistant, Katrina, just named you, Laura, as our winner for our uh, free video consultation. All you gotta do is like, I, I mean, all you gotta do is take a screenshot where you're watching this so I can see your username, I know it's you, and email it to me at info at jqklaw.com and I'll reply with information about scheduling the private consultation. Uh, for those just tuning in, a live show, we give away free video consultations. We've got one more left. In the next 10 minutes, we're gonna name somebody randomly. All you gotta do is like and subscribe and write consultation or just write something nice to comment or question and my wonderful assistant Katrina will randomly pick people so we can have a private chat about your case and take it from there. Uh, and i got to mention, if you haven't already, download the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide at marriageimmigrationlaw.com to learn more about the fiancé and marriage visa process. You're getting a lot of good documents and good evidence and information at that guide. Monica asks, what is the way to get an appointment in Ciudad Juarez? Just waiting for appointments in 2022. Unfortunately, I don't have any up-to-date information, but it takes forever right now. I think they're trying to speed it up, but at least it's going to take a year to get an appointment in Ciudad Juarez. Um, the last Ciudad uh, Juarez case I had was about a year ago, and it took like like 16 months to get the appointment with the embassy. Uh, it's a busy embassy, Ciudad Juarez. They shut it down, open it up, so it, it takes much longer. Malik asks, sir, my N-400 interview came while my I-751 was pending. I have a kid. Should I take my wife to the interview? Yes, uh, you should go because they're...
for now. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching it on the on the live feed on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn. We're back, and hopefully, we didn't lose a couple of questions. But let's get back into it. Unfortunately, the internet went a little crazy. I'll take a quick question on on Instagram. Uh, why will my assets be accepted for after day support? Well, it depends on how you show your assets, but they're strict on that. The MCs don't really help you out on that, so that may be a thing. But let's take some more questions on the other on the other pages. You need to talk to immigration lawyer, but unfortunately, they're not helpful when it comes to to the the assets. Um, okay, we answered Malik. Uh, what should you, your I seven five one interview is happening? You got to take your spouse there. They're going to do the citizenship case at the same time. Uh, okay, so am I back on StreamYard, uh, Katrina? I think I probably am. All right, so Mississippi Mr. says, a friend of mine has an adoption case submitted four years ago. This month he turns 21, and today he received update on the I-45 interview as it's rescheduled. What could that be? Uh, I don't know. That's that's that, that's their case. There's too much going on there. I'll need to talk to your friend uh, and see what's going on. have a consultation with them. She asked, is there any way to expedite step sibling petitions, uh, immigration? No, there's a line for siblings and they just got to wait through it. No way to expedite. You expedite the I-130, but that's not a wise thing to do. Um, but there's a there's a time, there's a line that exists that you just got to deal with. Quick note on, on TikTok, please don't uh, ask the same question over and over again. Um, it makes us confusing. We have to like, take you out of the feed if you keep doing that because it makes it hard to keep track of the questions. So we see how a couple people ask the same questions. We may have to just avoid your question if you repeat it just as a, as a negative prong for <laughs> doing that. So please uh, stop uh, to, to avoid that kind of problem from happening. All right, what's the next question we have coming up? Uh, uh, Ahil asks, I just married a US citizen. I have a green card for two years. When can I file for citizenship? Well, you have to, if you want to do the faster, so-called faster way in this kind of case, it's three years after you got married and living with your spouse. But at this point, you've had your green card for two years. Three years from now, you're going to have to file. You're just going to have to do the regular citizenship part. Just probably wait three years, most likely. A user 92 says, can I get married and apply for adjustment of status before 90 days B2 visa? <sighs> can you? Generally, yes. It depends on your case. This is a, is it, I, I can't tell you what to do because that would be individual legal guidance. In general, it's not impossible to do that. But there's a larger discussion going on about how you enter the United States, what your intent was, uh, how it looks, if they want to accuse you of fraud or misrepresentation, if you're married to a U.S. citizen as opposed to a green card holder. There's a lot of different factors you've got to analyze there to see if it's appropriate for you to do that or how risky it will be. So it's something you got to talk about in private. I'll say one of our regulars can see us says, hi, John, can you contact the embassy about a visa interview? If so, what should you tell them? Um, are you are you saying like there's a delay in the embassy and you wanted to move the case forward? You contact them, request an expedite. Usually it doesn't work. They usually don't care, but you always give it a shot if you have a good fact. Uh, um, to get a green card, but depends on the case. And um, it takes some Instagram questions. Tony asks if someone wants to go to Hawaii from India, do they need a U.S. visa? Yeah, Hawaii's in the United States. You need a U.S. visa to be able to answer Hawaii. Uh, we'll take a couple more questions. Uh, Amir uh, uh, Amel says, uh, I want to change my address using my USCIS account, but the option is not there. You should go to USCIS.gov and use the AR11 form. Or just type in AR-11 uh, on uh, Google and the form for USCIS come up and fill out the online form. That's the appropriate way to do it. Kimberly asks, if you're already in the United States, can your um, employer help aid with your green card? It's possible. Most of these cases take so long that uh, you won't be able to stay in the United States unless you have some other status, more longer term, not ever visa, like student visa <clears throat> or work visa. It may be possible, Kimberly, but it depends on your case. You need to know a lot more information um, before we can get to tell you if it's appropriate for you or not. Not typical ask, do local ICE officers actually investigate tips? Yeah, it's their job, you know, that happens. I'll say this, hi John, do you know how long the Senegal embassy takes to schedule interview? I think I had a recent Senegal case. Um, was it Senegal? Was it? It varies. You know, the thing about the embassies is we'll have two similar cases with the embassy. One gets an interview in two months and one takes a year. So whether it's fast or not, it just really depends on if they get around to you and stuff like that. But I think I had it was a Senegal. It wasn't Senegal. It was um, one of the neighboring countries, I think. So I don't I, I don't have any information I can really put out there right now. Sorry about that. Now, I, I do want to announce the winner of our last free video consultation for this show. It's Kimberly McLeod. Thanks for watching on TikTok. Just take a screenshot where you're watching this and email it to me so I know it's you. And we'll schedule a private video consultation to talk. 
Uh, for those who want to win next time, just come in Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time to a live show and just you know, ask questions and we get a consultation out of it. We have away three free ones next show next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We'll take two or three more questions and that'll be it for today. Uh, Suma ask, I'm a U.S. citizen. I want to bring my mom here and get her a green card. What's the process, please? I mean, you got to go through the process. Your mom has to apply, you apply for I-130. Once that's approved, we'll consular processing. And then she, she does an MC interview and then she comes here. That's a, a quick way of doing it. Okay, and I'll quickly explain it at least. And text has, do you do both you and your spouse submit tax returns with something I-130? I-130 I doesn't require tax returns, but if you're married, you should be filing your federal U.S. federal tax as married, and that's additional evidence of your relationship. But the I-130 itself doesn't require a tax return, especially like a foreign person. So it really depends on your case. I got to see what's going on and how you've been doing your taxes. And uh, Jaswinder asks, is free medical effects when you apply for citizenship? It depends on what the free medical care is. Uh, you know, if you, when you get free medical care from the United States, um, you have to tell them how much money you earn. So I have to be truthful there. If you got your case or a family-based case, um, your income of the joint sponsor or sponsor should be included, which will affect whether you get free medical care or not. And then it, that could be a problem if you didn't answer that properly. Also, if you get a thing like long-term medical benefits, like, you know, you, you have a nurse, bedside nurse for years, uh, that could be a problem too. So it really depends on if you answer the questions properly in that application or if you use those other things that are problematic for the public charge rule. If you already had your green card applying for citizenship, uh, some of that would have come into play, um, but it depends on what the free medical care is. You know, uh, I, I don't know the details of your case. Hamza asks, what is your personal estimate of how long it will take for me, a U.S. citizen, to apply for my, I don't think my 17-year-old son overseas? Uh, depends on what country they're from, so it, it varies, but probably uh, a year and a half to three years. Uh, Munir asks, how many days does it take to receive my work permit after submitting I-765 based on change of status? F2A, so that's called adjustment of status. Um, it could take one month to, to 10 months. These timelines are worthless. So one month, 10 months, one year, half to three years, it's like, it's worthless. That's why like, we've asked questions about timelines. It's, it, it's, it's just like, you gotta just wait uh, because my, these kind of timelines are very so dramatic, it becomes worthless. Morshad says, uh, my mom, she's here for three years and I applied for my sister under her name. I want, mom went back and I canceled her papers. I'm not sure what your question is there. Um, but, uh, but sure, <laughs> that sounds good. Um, let's see if we have another question or two, a call that Joseph asked, forgot to include form I-693 a month ago while applying, can I send it right now? No, wait for them to send you a letter asking for the I-693 I medical checkup. Don't send it on your own. Uh, it might get lost in the system. It's not a big deal. You don't have to send it with the initial application. Not a big deal. Maria asked, we did adjustment of status. My husband got approved. But I have, but I haven't. Am the main petitioner under F four? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Haven't am the petitioner under F four? Um, not sure what you, what you mean, Maria. I'm a little clear with your questions there. Uh, question on TikTok: like Retirement pay. Um, when you use assets, you got to document I six four adjustment for FAS support. Uh, the asset part is really complex. This is when you need to hire a lawyer for sure because what people try to do is hard. Plus, the embassies don't really want to look at assets, so. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a complex thing you got to really document well um, when, when you're doing assets for FAS support. Felice asks, my daughter's case became documentary qualified in June 2022 and no interview scheduled yet. How can I expedite it? Well, it depends on what kind of case you have for your daughter. Is it F1, adult child of a U.S. citizen that's unmarried? Is it F2A, minor child of a green card holder? F2B, adult child of a green card holder, single? F3, a married adult child of a U.S. citizen? Uh, each one of these have different timelines. So even if your case was documentary qualified, um, it might not be current. And the thing with the family-based categories is the line has a movement over here. So it just might take longer because there's no visa to give yet. The line's taking too long. And the last question, Morshad, is any question, how to get my sister here, which is under her name? I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, it depends on her facts and her background, really. But your question isn't too clear the way you've worded it. But unfortunately, that's the end of today's show. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll be back again next Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Love having you all on and talking about U.S. immigration. Have a good one.